what's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have a game three of our Way of the Rings tournament held at 401 Games. This video is brought to you by these awesome supporters of the channel who donate to the channel at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. You'll find the link in the description below. In this video we have Justin running the Crane Clan against William who we saw in the first video playing the Phoenix Clan. I think actually we saw Justin in video number two also but I could be incorrect. It's been, been a little while since I did a voiceover on these. Uh, but here's another video for you guys. A couple more coming in the series. They're on a playlist at Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube if you want to check out the previous videos of the series. And make sure you subscribe if you're new here. You count more current. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, we got a Kakata Asami. Uh, yeah. Kakita Asami. It's the one when you count more political strength on your side during a conflict, I believe. She can, uh, well, she's participating. She can take an honor from that opponent, so a little bit of uh, honor gain back if you're one of those crane players like myself that just loves to draw five like crazy and, you know, blow your honor and just deal with the honor as a kind of a currency for card draw. And on the other side we have Shiba Sakuni, the clan champ in Phoenix. And if you're new here, I apologize for my pronunciation, which I hear a lot of people on podcasts and stuff uh, say in video series. Uh, Cause yeah, <laughs> these these names, man, these names. But I understand it's part of the flavor of the game. So, but uh, don't expect me to be a pro at pronouncing them all. So two fate on both characters. And that's all they're going with. Crane player's got three fate left. Phoenix player only has one. It looks like uh, the crane player drew four there. I did not see what the Phoenix player uh, bid on their dial. We'll try to catch that as we go forward. So, Crane player going first here. Steward Art of Law is his first action here in the Dynasty phase. Which is an interesting one. We spoke about this in one of the earlier games of the series. Uh, it seems to be a theme. Uh, which I appreciate the reply in the comments on the one video where I asked why people were jumping these out early and even putting fate on them. But it's a great way to protect against a dishonor strategy. Uh, especially in a crane matchup when you're trying to make sure you don't fall behind having honored characters so your cancels work. So it looks like we're doing a fire military. Coming at shameful display there on the Phoenix side. And since, uh, so what we saw there is the clan champ on the Phoenix side gets honored because Steward of Law is in the conflict with Asami, so they cannot be dishonored, so he's just going to dishonor his, or honor his clan champ, so nice protection against running into Shameful Display, I guess. So we have a four shame played, so either a bow or a dishonor on the clan champ on the other side. He chooses a bow. He wants to keep his clan champ honored going forward. Doesn't really care that much about this conflict, it looks like. But the problem is it's a fire ring, so she could be dishonored anyway, but at least uh, she wouldn't go to neutral, then get dishonored from losing the conflict, which can hurt a lot since she has four glory. So apologies to see the debate, which uh, they do count their political skill here, even though uh, the one side is knelt. And of course, he's going to do it against the Steward of Law, which is only a uh, single political right now. And they both bid one, so the Phoenix player is going to go through the hand of the Crayon player and uh, choose a card here and uh, discard it. And also try to memorize everything he sees in the hand, so he has some good knowledge. We see two Voice of Honors in there, another Steward at Law. We see a Katana. Looks like a Bonsai. And now we know his uh, Splash, which is another good good uh, bonus from playing policy debate, policy debate earlier. And I hate when opponents do it to me and, you know, they see the let go or whatever I'm hiding in my hand, and then they know... They have to worry about Dragon Splash. Well, in this case, uh, he knows he has to worry about the Crane player and his um, I will pass for now. Unicorn Splash, because we saw an Uchi Wayfinder in the hand there. And now we know the Splash on the other side. The Phoenix player is Splashing Dragon. We have Fury played there to bow Asami. So Steward of Law, by himself, takes down the ring. 
And it's either honor or dishonor here from the ring effects. Sure, let's, uh, dishonor. He's going to dishonor the clan champ on the other side, which makes sense. Put her back to the 4-4 four four instead of an 8-8. Eight eight. <laughs> and no province break, obviously, a 1-0. Okay. I have no conflict, obviously. Okay. And no fate left on the Phoenix side. He's got no conflicts. He's passing. The crane player still has two fate, so he could jump in that uh, Street of Law we saw there, since a Voice of Honor looked like it was the discarded card uh, from the political duel there. So Wayfinder is going to do some peek in here out of province. And do we get to see what it is? Oh, he's going to show it to us. It's a manicured garden. So now we know that's the second province up there from the bottom of the screen on the uh, Phoenix side. Thank you, William. Oh, it was a political conflict. I think they had the ring on the wrong side or it flipped or something. But So we got a political fire off on the first one. I'm confused why he was about to do military here, but it makes sense. If that was a political, they just had it on the wrong side. I, I don't know what happened there. but No defense. defense. You're up. So no defenders. He's running at Shameful Display again since it's been triggered. He's going to do the Bonsai, which we know he was holding, to uh, pump up his Wayfinder. And he's going to break Shameful. And he's not going to spend the honor. So I guess he would only did the two bonsai pump there to get to three for the break. Doesn't have to worry about anything jumping in since no fates across the board. So that's smart. Save the honor where you can. Pass. Okay. Um, I guess I will also pass. Oh, so they got to do the earth ring here. Draw a card and then take a card at random from your opponent's hand. Let's try to see what he grabs here. And that is a Shireen Maiden. 1-1 one, one drop a uh, little monk after this character enters play. Reveal the top three cards of Conflict Dead. Deck, add each spell and each keyhole card revealed by this ability to your hand and discard the rest. I pass. Okay. So you get favor. Okay. So favor goes to the crane side, which is rare in the Phoenix matchup. I'm sure it won't stay there long. But at least that shuts off any censures on the Phoenix side of the board uh, being played for now. And uh, we'll help the Crane player if he's playing any. Okay. Appears to be a more played cancel than I thought it would be. Um, with, you know, that favor stipulation of having that on your side to play it. I put him in my deck to try it out. It worked out pretty good. Even when you don't have it. I mean, eh, a dead card, whatever, but... If you play smart and you keep the guys standing and, and, and you know, use your glory to your advantage as, as Crane, which I play uh, at this point, uh, they have decent glory stats. It's just against Phoenix. It's a little rough sometimes if the Phoenix players are really trying to grab that favor. So we have an Asami sticking around here with no fate. We got the clan champ on the other side. Sukuni uh, with one fate on her. Got some fate on rings now, ready to go. The Phoenix player is the first player. And let's see what we get flipped here. See a keeper making an appearance now on the Phoenix side. Looks like they both bid one on the dials there to only draw one card each. So Justin saw the play that the Phoenix player was going to put pressure on him by bidding low. So we have an Adept of the Waves brought in on the Dynasty phase with one fate. That's the guy that gives out Covert during water conflicts. And we have the Clan Champ on the other side, Doji Hutaru. Got some big hitters, big hitters here. Not putting any extra yeah, on. I'm about it. Um, and he's going to invest two fate on her. Uh, 
Help protect her from that water bow, which we know is probably coming from the Phoenix player. There is fate on the water ring, and the Phoenix player probably wants to grab that water ring. Maybe he'll go for the void. The void has some fate on it. That's another way to get some fate off, protect the characters he has with each one fate on it. And now we have another Adept of the Waves. No fate invested. And we got a pass on the crane side. Two fate left on each player's side here. Oh, why did I think they drew with the bids already? I'm, I'm a dummy. Here they go. Five to five. The one to one was left over from the last round. From the policy debate. Oh, man. It's early in the morning right now. Just, just sipping my coffee. I'll get with it. <laughs> So both looking to draw tons of cards here and keep pumping them into conflicts, which they kind of did last round a little bit. But I believe the Phoenix player's got a, got a nice hand advantage right now. And he just played that uh, Void attachment on his opponent's character. What is it? Embrace the Void. Play only if you control a Shugenja character, which he does with those Adept of the Waves, and interrupt when one or more fate would be removed from attached character. Instead, move that to your fate pool. My mind is blown. I didn't even think of doing that on your opponent's characters. William did it to me in my game uh, that you can see on this uh, in this channel, or on the channel in this playlist. Um, and yeah, he just put it on like an Adept of the Waves or whatever. He threw two fate in early, and then eventually... Uh, every time fate came off, he would just keep it and invest it in cards later in the game, which I thought was pretty genius. But throwing it on your opponent's character, and as fate comes off, you gain it. That uh, yeah, that zero zero cost. That is crazy. I'm I'm baffled here. I love it. I love it. Really gotta start playing some Phoenix. <laughs> All right, so it looks like the Phoenix player, William Harris, going for a water conflict of some kind. He's taking the fate, looking through his hand, trying to decide which province he wants to go after here. He's definitely going water. I'm sure he used one of his Adept of the Waves to give Covert to one of his characters till the end of the phase so he can deny them from defending. So Savvy Politician... And he's coming in with the Adept of the Waves with no fate and the clan champ running into a shameful display. So there's two characters in the conflict. He doesn't even have to declare a defender and he could do shameful display to honor one and dishonor the other. Defenders, you're up. Okay. First action. Uh, sure. The shameful display, dishonor. And... Oh, he's just going to do shameful, no defenders. Since he probably gave uh, covert to both those characters to covert past both the other, on the other side. And we have a court game to re-honor the uh, clan champ on the Phoenix side to put it back at neutral. We see the Adepta Waves is now honored. So it's a big political coming in here. I think we are at like 7 on 0. And it's going to be a break. He's going to discard the Savvy Politician. Bao Kakita Asami. Of course claim the ring. I think you go Void Ring on the uh, on the Crane side of things and try to uh, double tap some Void with Clan Champ if you can. Assuming she doesn't get a uh, Cloud the Mind slapped on her here. Oh, I have first priority. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I will pass. So we're just deciding on pre-conflict actions here. Oh, we got a Spyglass played in here on uh, Hotaru. So she's going to be able to draw some cards as she uh, moves in and out of conflicts. You're going to let go on it right away. Right away. No games here. No games. William is not playing around with Justin here. He just does not want that card draw to happen. It makes sense. Think you go void here. Sure. 
Yep, void it is. Makes sense. Gets a fade off the ring. It's going political. Hitting that second province, which we know is a manicured garden since he peeked at it earlier with the Wayfinder. Are we going to see any defenders here? Maybe that Adept of the Waves? Could see a character jump in later since three fate on the Phoenix side. Can definitely afford some characters bouncing in. First, and so no defenders, I don't think. First action is a Fury. Clan Champ is down, which is not good. Stuart of Law jumping in makes sense. So assuming there's no defenders, it's 1-0 to zero right now. I don't think there are. And we have a Shrine Maiden jumping in for one. Here we go with that ability we talked about earlier. Looking at the top cards, we've got a Bonsai, another Shrine Maiden. And a display of power grabbed very quickly there. But not enough fate to play right now. But uh, he does have Manicured Garden. He has not triggered yet. But he does have a character in the challenge. And we got the bow off the Crane Stronghold. Shride Maiden going down. Also, just a side note, let me know in the comments below, guys, if uh, we made any mistakes, help other people watching these videos in the future. But also, I'd be curious to let me know uh, what you think about the new microphone slash audio mixer I'm using. Playing around with the settings, trying to figure this out. This is my first uh, voiceover on an LCG with it. Uh, so thanks to the Patreon supporters on the channel to help me out there. Uh, offset the cost of this audio equipment. So hopefully it makes the quality of the videos better. But I'd like to hear what you guys think. Any, anybody who's watched the previous videos, even in this series, and then check with the audio on this one, let me know. Is it too loud? Have they messed with it? I guess you can turn that down, but... Uh, What's the quality like, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you got it. Pass. All right, so it looks like it's a win for the crane player on the offense, getting that void ring off. Display of power, since I saw you draw into that. Well, I can't have a defender. Oh yeah, no display of power since that Shrine Maiden jumped in and then did her effect. It was too late. He saw that display of power, wants it for future use. But he's going to double tap. Oh, he's going to double tap Otaru to get two fate off of the characters, of course. Boom, boom. Gets rid of that Adept of the Waves. And uh, Clan Champ at the end of the uh, the round here in the fate phase, hopefully. So I think that was a very, very successful, very successful void conflict there. Even though the province wasn't broken, I think that was well done. Air military. Against okay. so, that, that uh, Kabuki hero sitting on that promise there. Hits the meditations on the Tau. Okay. No fate left though to remove. So yeah, yep. province not really doing anything on the effect there. That Adepta Waves coming in at 2-0 to zero right now. I will pass. Supernatural Storm him. Yep. Plus two, plus two. Yep. So a supernatural storm bumping them up two on each skill since we got two Shigenjas in play. I believe how that, that's how that works. So he's got enough for break. Yes. Spending another one. Cloud the mind. There it is. He had it the whole time. He made a mistake, he said. And he should have put it on her earlier to not remove that second fate. That is too bad. So he gets it out of his hand now, throws it on the clan champs. So she's got two fate on her. She's going to stick around. Might as well do it. And we got the province broken. He's going to steal a f uh, an honor. Looks like eight honor on the Phoenix side, assuming all that we can see there on the screen is what he has. And ten on the crane side. 
Another Stuart Law. Holy. All the fate spent now on the crane side. Looks like we're going to have a fourth conflict here. Okay. And we got one on the other side. And against the waves to stand the honored adept of the waves on, on the other side. He's a 4 4 right now. Looks like the favor is probably going to switch sides here. Okay. Um, you have a conflict, yeah, I, I definitely think you're going with the conflict either way uh, to wait. maybe uh, win a ring and tie it up. Military, uh, and hopefully that depth of the waves comes in on the defense. So it winds up out at the end and then you have two rings on two rings and the crane player will keep the favor hopefully. But we'll see how the Phoenix player handles this here. Looks like he wants to dishonor or honor one of his characters who's coming with a fire uh, military against the Meditation of the Tau on the other side. Another good hit with that Steward of Law, not having to worry about fate being removed. Um, six. And the Adept of the Waves is coming in on the defense. And we got a Bonsai. Double tapped, five against four uh, for the attacker. Supernatural Storm, another two added on there. Six on the defense, five on the offense. Oh, and the favor is involved. Ah, I forgot about that. So six to six. Attackers win the tie, I believe. So Supernatural Storm, he's taking that back. He's not going to do it since it doesn't really win him the conflict. Probably has no other answers to buff, so why waste it? But this is a casual Way of the Rings tournament, so keep that in mind. Take backs seem to be an okay thing. It's one of those three intro tournaments, so it's a little more structured, but it's meant for newer players. Try things out. So we have a Fury actually played instead to bow the Steward of Law. Ring is taking on defense, actually. And uh, the Phoenix player is definitely taking the favor. Going to put the favor on political. And only one fate on one of the rings there. And grabs a voice of honor. Oh, that was the earth ring. Oh, from the clan champ. Yes, clan champ triggering the earth ring there. That's what they're doing. <laughs> All right. So pretty interesting first couple of rounds here. Both players going pretty aggressive, trying to get a lot of conflicts in, blowing lots of cards, spending lots of fate. No one really, no one really sitting back trying to build up fate for a huge blowout turn or anything like that. So uh, me, two provinces broken on the crane side, one broken on the phoenix side, but two two others revealed on the phoenix side. So definitely being aggressive here, trying to break provinces. We got a couple doji representatives showing a cautious scout and a challenger on the crane side, so some some juicy characters. And on the other side, we do see uh, I don't know how to say her name, but uh, Kade. Let me see if I can uh, try to butcher it for you guys here. Asawa Kade. Are we gonna see another a big five coster brought in here by the Phoenix player? I don't know. I don't know if you go that route this, at this point. Maybe put a couple of the two costers or one costers in there and try just. You know, save some fate for future. Hold the crane player off from smashing it with the Doji Challenger and his clan champ. Let's see 
William Counting through fate right now. How much does he want to put in here? How much can he get on the board? Thinking about his, his opponent might pass. Does he just go all in, not worry about the pass, and his opponent, opponent gaining that extra fate? Looks like he put in a Solemn Scholar and the Diplomat. So the Scholar is a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one on all the stats. Uh, Shugenja, Earth Scholar. Action during a conflict. If the Earth Ring is in your claimed ring pool, choose an attacking character and bow that character. Ooh, boy. That's a good one. Good defensive uh, character there to help protect his provinces while he tries to build up for future turns where he can be more aggressive. And then the other one is the two-cost Diplomat, 1-2, a Courtier. And it looks like they both go five on the draw there for their uh, for their bids. And this uh, diplomat has reaction after this character wins a conflict. Choose a character, honor or dishonor that character, which is great in Phoenix. Trying to uh, you know get away from that high glory count on their more expensive characters. Trying to re-honor them after they get dishonored is always good. Or just honoring them if you're kind of in that situation where you can you know just buff them up and smash your opponent with less less characters. <laughs> Another Embrace the Void here on the uh, Challenger that has two Fate on it. So good investment here. Definitely going to win the Fate race, I think, on the Phoenix side. Even though his opponent's passing early, getting extra Fate, he's able to get it back later, kind of investing in the future. I like it. Saving up for that Kade. Eh? <laughs> So the crane player is first this time. Favor is on the other side. One, plus one political. He's going to come military most likely first with the challenger, which makes sense. You can pull someone in, bow them out. Not worry about breaking and kind of set up a juicier um, political after that. And we've seen two Furies played already. And now uh, Justin's being smart and poking at newer provinces to get them revealed to make those Furies pretty much useless. Only one province not revealed now, so... Fury can only bow, I think, a one glory or less character. Which Challenger and Doji Otaru are safe from being Fury now. And we see, uh, what is it, Along the River of the Gold, I think that one's called. Let's try to find it here. Along the River of Gold, it's a river for province strength. Water roll only. And during a conflict at a water province, choose a participating character and switch that character's base, military, and political skill until the end of the conflict. So you really mess with your opponent's plans, but the Doji Challenger is a 3 3. Uh, pretty even here, so that province isn't really going to do much. But I mean, it could do something on the Phoenix side. Definitely help if uh, it's a military here. He's got those diplomats that are higher on. Uh, political, no so he can switch those stats around if he wants to get them honored and that kind of thing, get them up there. So we have a katana now, five strength on the attack. I don't think there's any defenders right now. He's just going to let it break. Doesn't seem to care. I think he needs to pull someone in the conflict, though. We have a charge. Which is super interesting with the Doji representative. That's what he's going to do it with. Gets it in play, which it would have been discarded off that province at the end of the end of the round anyway. So he gets it in there, and then he can move it out of the conflict and use it in a future conflict. Man, these guys and their trick trickery play. I love it. Both are great players. Thanks for letting me film you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Get to see some cool plays here. I'm learning a lot myself. <laughs> So I guess the Diplomat gets pulled in, or it's already in. I'm not sure here. It's hard with William. He keeps his uh, characters. He kind of just says what's going on. He doesn't really move his characters in the front row when they're defending. At least not all the time he does, but I'll try to see here. Oh, I see what's happening here. So the Challenger pulls in the Diplomat. And William, another sneaky play, assassinates his own diplomat so he can go unopposed, so he can use the display of power to dishonor 
or just I'm most likely just honor the clan champ on the other side uh, by using the ring effect when he plays display of power. Very interesting plays here, and then that makes it tougher for the political to happen. But the Doji representative moves back, of course. So five to zero, I think we're still at here. Very interesting uh, line of play here. Love it. Okay, I will pass and break. Yep. yep. Okay. So we got the break. Are we going to see the display of power? I'm sure. And yeah, we do see the display of power. No cancels possible from the crane player. So Hotaru gets dishonored, of course. And the ring gets claimed on the Phoenix side. Looking to. Also keep that favor by, you know, losing conflicts and spending two bucks to keep the rings. Uh, that'll do it for you. Okay, three conflicts. You're up. Three conflicts. Spending two fate, sorry, not bucks. So one fate spent, spyglass placed on the clan champ on the crane side. As a pre-conflict action. I pass. I also pass. This looks like the diplomat and the scholar coming in here for a Earth military. Going at the cautious scout province there. Fertile fields, drawn cards. It's an air, so he's going to gain a fate. So yeah, we hear Justin there talking about that, that the clan champ on his side is zero since she's dishonored. We've got the representative. That's one one strength in military. And uh, I think we've seen all three steward at laws, so none of those jumping in. He doesn't have enough fate to jump in the uh, political rival, I don't believe. I don't think that is uh, that character. I think might have... Yeah. Oh, that character can't even participate in military. He's got a dash. So he's going to put the representative in there. Try to stop the province from breaking. If uh, that's even possible here, I'm not sure. Let's see how this plays out. So he drew a card off Fertile Fields. Which ring are you? Oh, Mountain? Mountain. Or Gaijin Customs. So since he has the Spyglass in play, he can play Gaijin Customs here, the Unicorn card to ready a non-Unicorn character, which is a Dochi Challenger, standing right back up. I don't know if he has a way to get it in the conflict. It's obviously setting up for future province smashing here. Or v investing in getting the favor back, maybe. Two glory on that uh, challengers. Nothing to sneeze at. Still winning, right? So two to one right now, military, I believe. For the Phoenix player on the attack, looking to draw a card and discard a card from his opponent, which is maybe why he played that guy in customs early there. So we got the honor on the challenger canceled with censure. So a policy debate, three to one, picks the Scholar and the Doji representative. Does he have another censure to cancel? Nope, does not look like he wants to do it, or doesn't have it. So three to one for the Korean player. Let's see what they bid on the dials here. Two to five. Wow, the Phoenix player trying to protect his hand. Yes. I go up to six, you go to five. Yep. And I lose three to you. Three honor loss. Wow. The Phoenix player down to one honor. But he does get to look at the four cards there, it looks like, in the crane player's hand. A couple four shames. Voice of honor. I didn't see what the other one was. Court games, maybe? 
Was it test of skill? Oh, admit defeat. It's admit defeat. Just going to get rid of a four shame. Nope. <laughs> admit defeat. Great card. Love that one. That was one of the cards that drew me to the crane faction. So we have a four shame uh, targeting the scholar here. So dishonor or bow. And we have a dishonor on the scholar. Makes him a zero zero. So tied one to one right now, I'm pretty sure. There's no limit on the amount of four shames that can be played in a conflict. You could play another one and force bow on the scholar or dishonor the other character. Or maybe bow it. Yeah, he is going to use it on the diplomat. There's no restriction, right? Yeah, no restriction. They do. <laughs> William's smart to ask. And he dishonors his other character. Which is putting him in a bad spot sitting at one honor, I'm pretty sure. Unless we can't see some of it off screen. So we see Benton's touch to bow Shugenja to honor a character. So he's got one dishonor sitting there, though. He's got to get rid of it. You know, you have a voice of honor left. Yeah, but no honor. Yeah. Um, I will pass. I win the conflict? Yep. So conflict one. He's going to discard the last card of the crane player's hand. He's now empty-handed and draws a card. And since that diplomat uh, won, he's going to dishonor the challenger. So two dishonored characters on the other side of the board. And claims the ring on the Phoenix side. One fate remaining on the Phoenix player's side. He's got to make sure he defends also so he doesn't lose that last honor. Did you use your fertile fields? Yes. Okay. Got to make sure this doesn't go unopposed or he'll lose that uh, last honor. Sure he has a way to stand up a Shugenja, throw it in the conflict. He's going to go after Manicured Gardens. I don't think that's smart because he's going to get that extra fate that he needs to use it to display a power. I think you go at Meditations and, and say, who cares, lose a fate off your clan champ, lose her next round, whatever. No, you broke this one, yeah. so I haven't used it. Oh, I, I think that's a misplay. I think. You don't want to give an extra fate to that. Uh... Oh, but then also having the Embrace the Void on the Clan Champ would make that fate go across the table anyway. So Meditations is also a bad call. Ah, rock in a hard place. Never mind. Never mind. Ah, so Display of Power is going to help him get Honor back. Ugh. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I think you'd pass on conflicts maybe there. And just hopefully that Dishonored on the Scholar just uh, ends it for the Phoenix player. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm not sure if I'm seeing it right here, but I think that uh, was a mistake to go and attack those provinces right now because it sets up that possibility of display of power, which we, we see in the hand of William there. 
He's going to raise the honor on the Doji Challenger, so that dishonor is hitting her very hard, putting it at 1-1. One, one. Or, or, sorry, a well, he's got a katana. So, one on the defense. So it looks like that uh, conflict just fizzled there. Nothing really going on. Free conflict. Okay. I'll unbound my Shugenja. So we see a uh, Shugenja stand there off uh, against the waves. And we got a political void coming in now. Hitting that fertile fields, which has been triggered already this round. And we have a bow off the crane stronghold, taking down that scholar. Still got one in there because he's got the favor. And we got a void on the crane clan champ and takes the fate from it since she has a brace of void. That's it, right? You've declared two. I've declared two. Sorry, I get the void. And I keep favor on political. Okay. 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 Uh, oh, sorry. He has a fate on that scholar too, so it's not going away. It's not going away right now. Oh, I'm a dummy. So he gets a fate off the uh, Doji Challenger since she's got an abrasive void also. So Phoenix player definitely doing well in this money game here. I like it. So scholar stays around. One honor. The Phoenix player is dancing very low. And Phoenix player is now the first player. We see a prodigy of the waves making an appearance here. Great Phoenix card. Yeah. Okay. That's the one while a water ring is claimed. You can ready the character as an action. And we see a doji representative. Two fate placed on it. So you start with eight, right? And then you spent five? Yeah. See a naive student. <laughs> and we have an artisan played on the other side. Just able to bow and give three political to a character, and he goes all in. Doji Whisperer too. And yeah, I guess I pass. Two provinces broken on both sides. Still one hidden province on the crane side. Eleven honor. It looks like on the crane side of things. One honor on the Phoenix side. Here we go to the dials. He must have more honor off the screens. He just bid two. Maybe he just knew the crane player was going to go high since he had no cards in hand. Or at least very little cards in hand. And the Phoenix player gets three honor for that, that bid exchange there. So he's now not not so not so close to losing now from honor. And we have a third embrace the void now on the adept, uh, sorry, the prodigy of the waves. So he's going to keep that bait uh, after it gets removed.
We see another Keeper Initiate there. We see a Fate on the Water Ring. I'm sure with the Phoenix player going first, he's eyeballing that Water Ring. Wants to trigger that. Get those two Keeper Initiates I believe he's seen already into play with Fate on them. And can maybe do an aggressive push here. Maybe break Fertile Fields. And make a play on the Stronghold next turn. So there it is, water right away. Gets a fade off the water ring. Goes military. Is he going after fertile fields or is he gonna to try to peek at what's left? He's trying to, he's looking at the elements here. See if a card draw would happen. Maybe off that hidden province. But fertile fields definitely will draw a card for the crane player. He's going to go at Fertile Fields, just using the Prodigy of the Waves. Military? Yep. Okay. Three strength on the military, coming in on attack. Maybe to throw the Doji representative. No, he's going to do the Challenger. Five on the defense. Oh, actually, sorry. It's Dishonored. So three on the defense. Three on the offense. So wave the crane, try to get that honor off. Are we going to see a censure? <laughs> no, it's okay. So she's back to neutral. So it's now five on the defense, three on the offense. And we have a charge. Bringing in a Ujimbo for an additional three on the offense. So six to five for the attacker. And Fertile Fields drawing a card for the crane player. Hoping to find something he can do to deal with this. I'm showing six or five. Yeah, he doesn't want to have one of his characters bowed with that water ring. He doesn't want to let the uh, the uh, Phoenix player get a hold of that water ring. Oh, he tried to trigger the Doji oh, Challenger on defense, but that is a no-no. Doji Challenger can only do that on offense. As the attacker, which is why I, I don't know if I would have put it in there. I would have might have done the Doji representative. And then maybe moved it out if you know you're just going to lose anyway. But uh, it's going to do a bonsai. He's going all in here trying to prevent this win. Is he going to get away with the first plus two or is it going to be canceled straight out? He's going to try it again and do a plus four. So I think it's six on the offense, nine on the defense now. And the interesting thing with that Ujimbo out there, it protects the Shugenja, can cancel the effects of hitting one, so uh, kind of adds some protection, so he doesn't have to worry about yeah, his fine. characters okay. getting hit Pass. with anything, really, in this conflict. Pass, yep. So it's going to be successfully defended, so the fire ring will be claimed on the defense. But now the water ring is claimed, so that Prodigy of the Waves can just stand right back up, which we're seeing happening right here. So juicy, so juicy. Is that if you claim it or is uh, anyway if it's claimed at all? The Earth Ring? Yeah. It's if I claimed it. Okay. Sure. Uh, Spy glass. So we're going to Spyglass on the Doji representative, which is a great target for that since it can move out of conflicts. 
and get it again. So it's the uh, Spyglass, I believe, is limit two uh, per round or two per phase or whatever. So you can get two cards out of it. And we could see another Gaijin Customs play to ready that Doji Challenger. I believe we've only seen one. So political air gets the fade off the ring. <laughs> Doesn't want to go at meditations to lose a fate. Doesn't want to go at manicure garden to give his opponent a fate. He's got to go at one of them. They're both four province strength, so we need to put the same in. I think you just go at manicured gardens, but I could be wrong. I say you go after meditations. Like, you lose the fate off your representative, oh well. Like, it just keeps it around. You still get it next turn if you do it right, if you don't lose a Void Ring. But. So he's going to go at Manicured. Are we going to see a Defender? Quite the interesting game here. I don't like to spam social media by posting all my videos uh, in the groups. If you guys want to share them on social media, go ahead. But if you want to leave comments below, let me know what you think about certain matches. If you think it's like a really exceptional match, you think other people should watch, leave like a little mini review letting me know that in the comments below. And then uh, I'll be sure to share those ones on social media and let people know your little review. I do it for my Game of Thrones card game videos. If, if I get a bunch of comments saying how great the match is, one of the best matches, that kind of thing, very exciting down to the wire, those, those kind of little reviews, I'll kind of quote you. Uh, when I share it on social media. So if you see any of my L5R videos you guys like, or any videos in general, let me know and I'll I'll share them and let, let, let other people know that they're really good matches. Because to me, I find watching them all, I obviously or wouldn't be doing this. But uh, obviously some are more exceptional than others. Or there's some very smart play or, you know, some interesting interactions or some cool cards played or, you know, a very close match that could have gone, gone either way. And you want other people to see it, leave it in the comments below. So it looks like six on the defense, seven on the offense. Prodigy of the Waves getting uh, buffed with the glory there off the Phoenix Stronghold. And since it's honored, it's giving itself plus four. So uh, he's got six in his character, or seven, seven on the character now. And plus one from the political bump off the favor. So right now the Phoenix player on defense is up one skill. Are we going to see that uh, Artisan uh, bowed to give plus three political to a character? Or are we going to see the Doji representative just duck out? Just say, you know what, I'm, I'm done, I'm good. Go back home. Come into another conflict, use that Spyglass again. But no, we are going to see the buff here on the Doji Whisper. He's got to bow that character due to her ability. See if they remember. Hopefully he doesn't keep it readied. That would be a bad mistake. On both players' sides, letting that one through. Policy debate. Okay. And we have policy debate. Prodigy against the Doji representative. So I am a seven. Seven against four for the Phoenix player. Let's see what they bid here and who gets to go in uh, which player's hand and discard a card. And you might see another big honor shift here. That Phoenix player only sitting at uh, four honor. I don't think he'd bid too much though. But he does, three to five. So two honors actually going to switch sides, go over to the Phoenix player. So he's, they're both very tied. On, uh, I think they're one more honor on the Phoenix side. And the Phoenix player is going to go through the hand. Of the crane player, we see an admit defeat. 
court games, assassination to uh, noble sacrifices. But he's not in a spot to use those noble sacrifices, really. Would have been nice to see those earlier. <laughs> Try to get rid of a dishonored character off the board uh, from his opponent. That's probably why he was maybe going for that those voice of honors earlier that were getting canceled with the censure. Try to win the game there on dishonor. So eight on the defense, ten on the offense. Air ring. Two noble sacks, the mid defeat, and the sacks. I really played that first. Yeah. Especially when I, I was like, oh, I still got. This looks like court games was the discarded target card there off the policy debate. There they go. They remember. They remember to bow on the artisan's ability. Does he move the whisper or the uh, representative home? That's what I think he's really thinking about here. Three cards in hand. I have three. Three cards in hand on the Phoenix player's side. Hasn't done his manicure guard, and he just said still has four fate though. So if he moves the representative out, he still has seven, I believe. Yeah, I think. Or six. Six from the uh, Doji Whisperer since he buffed it with the Artisan. So does he let the Phoenix player just take it, get the ring, win on defense, get his representative out of there? I think you do it. I think you do it. And it makes sense. He can't break. He's only up by two, and he has no other ways to buff. That's why he said he wished he used that court games earlier before it got discarded on policy debate. So it would have helped him be protected from policy debate, possibly. So you still have a game that's ring. You still have a military left. So no province break. Ring claimed on defense. Phoenix player bows his prodigy of the waves after the conflict, but that Doge's representative just backed out, said he'll fight another day. Hopefully draw another good card for his opponent. Or, or sorry, for the crane player. If you guys want to see more L5R, make sure you slap that like button on these L5R videos. Let me know you're you're interested. So now over to the crane player player. The Phoenix player passed on his second conflict. He's gonna play defensively. And it looks like the crane player is uh, thinking of using the doji representative here on a fire. He didn't use manicured garden yet. Interesting. So this is the last conflict of the round. Yeah, the okay. last conflict. Of the... Okay, so yeah, I'll say fire on 
So he's going to fire on manicured gardens, military. Spyglass drawing him a card, manicured, getting him a fate. So it looks like no defenders. Setting up a display of power, maybe. That's what I'm feeling is coming here. I'll pass for now. I pass. Okay. And display of power, of course. Spend some of that extra fate he's got to dishonor. I think you do the challenger, but the representative is a good choice, too, since it will stick around a little longer. But he's debating here which one to dishonor. He's going to do the challenger. Yep, that's what I would have done. Not sure if he lost his uh, unopposed honor. No more conflicts. Okay. Yeah. I get favor. I'll keep Wasn't it enough to break. Um, fate phase. And the Phoenix player keeping that honor, or sorry, keeping the favor. Yep. Just uh, owning it there. That Crane player got away with it like the first turn, but that yeah, it's tough in the Phoenix matchup. Just always have these ways, just keeping that favor, just keeping guys stand. Everyone's high glory. Looks like five honor on the Korean side, four honor on the Phoenix side, so pretty even there. Phoenix player having five extra honor going into this into this dynasty phase here, this next round. Crane player only had one honor, or one fate, sorry, fate, fate, fate. Five fate carried over, one fate carried over on the crane side. All depends what's flipped here, let's see. So it looks like a lot of quote unquote weenies on the Phoenix side. And a bunch of weenies also on the crane side, except for we see uh, the Yoshi. It's a big hitter, but. More fate on the other side. We'll see. So Savvy Politician is the first card of choice here from the Crane player. Going first. Puts a fate on it. So right around now is when the round would have ended. Uh, but like I said in one of the previous videos, our TO really wasn't paying attention. Keeping track of time. Uh, he was also running the store at the time. So busy handling customers. And kept forgetting to remind us to end the conflict. Or end the... Uh, bleh. And the game. So a lot of games went over the one hour mark. Oh, they do. They do realize. Okay. There was a point where I took over and just tried to keep a timer going, but I guess it was now. So they're counting the points here. We got two. So three points up as a Phoenix player since he has more honor. Nope. Why is he up? How many rounds? How many things do we get? Three rounds. Just we just get one, like one round. Oh, one round. Yeah, so they get to finish the round. It looks like no concedes happening. The Phoenix player has. I don't. I don't know if he has more honor. Maybe he's got honor off the map. We're not seeing right now. I don't. I don't know. But because more honorable should go to the crane if it's five to four. But we could be incorrect on that. But well, the Phoenix player, I believe, he said he was up to th up three. So he's got two provinces broken, two points for each, up to three points each, uh, up to six points on the province breaks. And then the favor gets you a point. And then whoever's more honorable gets two. So they're going to keep playing it out. So we did have time called. I take back what I said. It was only that first round, I believe, where everyone kind of went over. So this one, I guess, just keeps going longer. As you guys see the time on the video, we got we got some more some more conflicts coming here. We're going to play to the end of the round. So sit tight. We got a close one here. And they're going to play it out. So yeah, there was a point where I took over and just started timing the rounds to try, try to keep them keep them going here. We're only playing a three-round, like, casual tournament. Don't want to be there for seven hours, so. <laughs> Which can happen with L5R. It can go a little long sometimes. All right, so they're bidding here. It's very, very careful. They're semi-low on honor. So if someone would bid one and the other person went five, we could have a very, very crazy dance around that low honor total. One player is trying to dishonor the other and win that, that way. So now that they're playing it out, uh, the only way I think you can get a full win is by actually fully winning. But I could be wrong. 
So three bid on the Phoenix side, two bid on the uh, Crane side. So one honor crosses the table there. Crane players at six. And let's see what happens here. Crane player going first. So Cloud the Mind out there on the Doji Challenger. So she's not going to be able to do her aggressive first conflict and then bring a character in. Not that the Phoenix player is too worried with all the stand tech they have in their deck where they can just ready characters, you know, for, for really no reason. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not salty at all if they can do that. Not salty at all. So political fire. Is he going to keep bouncing off that manicured guard and just feeding the Phoenix player fate? Uh, looks like he's going to try it again. It's the last round of the game. I say you go at meditations. Who cares? Like, who really cares? But I, I guess it is protection from the... Uh, it doesn't even make sense. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's thinking of moving the representative out. And then that way he wants to keep fate on it so it's protected against a watering bow. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure why you don't just go at meditations there. So this is the last round of the game. Justin, if you're watching, let us know. I'm curious. Of course, Spyglass getting him a card. Yeah, there's the, the card draw off Spyglass there. You almost forgot. <laughs> so six on the offense right now, political. Are we going to see any defenders? Now, if he can protect his stronghold, he doesn't really care about losing this province here. If he doesn't think his stronghold's going to get smashed, he's fine. But five fate sitting on that crane player's uh, roll card there. Who knows? Who knows? Could be a political rival jumping in and coverting past someone for a crazy break. Or just a big defensive block is in the political rival. Who knows what's hiding in the hand there. But he obviously saved all that fate for a reason and didn't bring that Yoshi out. Maybe you didn't know it was the last round at, at first. I forget when time was called there if they were already into it, but seen assassination in the hand of the Phoenix player. But I, I'm really curious if he's got extra honor hiding off the board there because he's only at three, so that assassination is kind of a dead card. But he does have it at the top of his hand there, so it's something he's keeping his eye on. William being very careful here, calculating out what he'll have left for future conflicts. What's he puts what he puts in on defense? Does he have enough to stop breaks? Because if you're going to defend, you want to at least stop the break. And he's going to put three in on the defense. Nope, four, four on the defense. So he's got the favor, and he's going to take a fade off manicured gardens. He's going to bow the Ujimbo before it gets buffed off that court games we see in hand. No uh, no honoring it to raise it up. But I believe it's a Shugenja. No, it's not. It's a Bushi and a Ujimbo. So no reading it with Adept the Waves. Or uh, what's the other one? Is it Benton's Touch? Where you bow a Shugenja to ready a character or something like that. Where is it? Benton's touch during a conflict. Bow a friendly Shugenja, Phoenix Shugenja. Choose a participating character to control and honor that character. So honor, sorry, not ready. My bad. I guess it's just against the waves. So we got the court games. And the doji representative. Yeah, it looks like the Doji representative is going to get the dishonor. Uh, 
Yeah, so it's weird. The opponent opponent chose the Doja representative. Uh, not the savvy politician to dishonor there. Very strange. And we heard him say it's probably not the best choice. But he's probably looking to move it out and maybe use the artisan on the savvy politician, maybe. And maybe the savvy politician is going to get honored anyway, and then it'll hit the Doja representative and buff that. So you guys are just playing out this round? Is yeah. that what's going on? Okay. I'll do that and give... Uh, it's going to give it to the Doji representative, buffed by three. What is going on here? So it looks like seven on the attack. Two on the defense with that scholar and the uh, favor. I'm not sure why he moves his characters back like that. <laughs> Puts them back in line. They're still in the conflict. Oh, he's slightly pushing up the scholar. His game was really close too. It just happened to be like your attack when time is at the top. Yeah. So a few rounds now. He's been sitting at two broken provinces on each side. Conflicts won. Lots of aggressive attacking, but just no provinces broke. Players playing just defensive enough to stop that. Lots of rings claimed on the defense. Display of powers. Crazy game. I love it. But, uh, yeah, just not progressing enough to actually get to the strongholds here. Seven to two. And maybe he's trying to use that fire ring to honor the savvy politician. Maybe he's not sitting on any uh, uh, way of the cranes. Work work games of his own to uh, buff it up. But eight cards in hand on the crane player. Wow. Eight cards. He's got to have something in there to buff that savvy politician, but, I mean, he doesn't need to do it right now. I don't think, but, uh... And the Phoenix player's going to pass. So we see a pass, and he's just going to break. But I, I don't know. I, I'd maybe do an action. Move that Doji representative out. Maybe you don't need him in there. Oh, never mind. He buffed him with the Artisan, so he's got to kind of keep it around, I guess. So three provinces broken on the Phoenix side. Uh, I guess I got the fire ring, right? Yep. So, um, yeah, basically she's going to be honored. Um, yeah, so he's going to use the fire ring to honor the savvy politician. And, uh, and then the challenger loses the dishonor token. Makes sense. So it's like the Prodigy of the Waves and the Suki are coming out on a political water against Fertile Fields. And the Doji Challenger is coming in on defense. Try to prevent the break. He's looking to try to claim that water ring using that Suki's ability to honor a character, a uh, scholar character, I guess. So it's like eight on the attack, five on the. No, oh no, it's three on the defense. Yeah, political. So that katana's not counting. And fertile fields to draw. It's the first action by the defender. Hopefully, get some answers here. That five fate saved on the crane side really has me curious. What do you save that for? Maybe he's just saving it for a future round. Thought it would go longer. That's the only thing I can think of here. Unless he's got a political rival or... 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe some other ambush character. I think we've seen all three Stuart Laws, so it can't be that. So pass by the Phoenix player since he's in the position to break. Over to the defense crane player Justin here for his action. If he passes, it's a break. Goes through. We see the honored. We see the watering claimed. Prodigy of the Waves as an action after the conflict can ready itself back up. Can also use that water to ready one of his characters. And be in a good position to go at the stronghold. We may see a Phoenix player break the stronghold here at the Cream player. Does the Cream player, Justin, have any answers here to stop this break? Assassination's the start. So he's going to cancel with the Jimbo because it's targeting Shugenja. Unless Justin has an answer, I don't think he's in a good spot here. I think uh, that's it. He's going to pass. Yeah, we're going to let the province break. So he's got to do the reaction off uh, Suki there. Sorry, that's defended. So I get to unbow someone for water. Okay. Okay, let's, let's do this right. Um, resolve water. Sorry, break first. Mm -hmm. So province broken. Discard. Water ring claimed. He's gonna do should do a reaction to claiming the water ring with his Suki. Um, I will unbow. He's gonna unbow the Ujimbo using the water ring effect. Reaction. Here comes the Suki's reaction. Honor. He's gonna honor the Suki. The keepers are coming in too. Forgot all about those. Oh man. Uh, yeah. I think we're going to have a stronghold break here. Yeah, since the last round of the game, 5 fate even, I don't know what Justin can bomb in here to make any difference at all. But that is tough. So Pre-conflict, we're most likely going to see the Prodigy of the Wave stand up here using its action. Oh, we got one fate spent. And we have a wavefinder. Forgot about those. He's going to take a peek at the stronghold, which we don't see here. But I think from the first game, we know it's an entrenched position, I think, is what uh, William is using there under his uh, Phoenix stronghold. Uh, Ujimbo, two keeper initiates. And probably that Prodigy Wave standing up, coming back at you. Oh, I don't know. And there, yep, the Prodigy of the Wave standing right back up. Okay. So even if the Wayfinder were to run at the Phoenix Stronghold, uh, I think military is what he's got to do, and it's entrenched position, and there's no way he's getting up there. So he just concedes. William, the Phoenix player, takes it. What a back and forth. Yeah, and an assassination sitting in hand. Swing back at your so he must have more honor. He must have more honor if he's threatening an assassination there. So yeah, Justin just concedes. It's over. But uh, William takes it. What an interesting game. Wow. That was crazy. Guys, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you want to help uh, increase the quality of the channel here, get more videos up, get me to more tournaments, help off offset the cost of doing this whole YouTube thing, click that support uh, on Patreon button there on the right of your screen if you want to watch more videos. Uh, there should be some ones there. Thanks all for watching, guys. See you later.